Hello, everybody. Welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a great day. And without any further ado, uh, let's jump right into it. Um, a larger part of the Bitcoin news today is kind of like, I want to say, all over the place. Um, and I think that is because, at least at the time of me making this video, there doesn't seem to be like a definitively clear direction that the market is going to go. So a lot of the articles floating around are actually discussing like the movements down and I'm not joking, discussing the movements down in price and then talking about if the prices are going to go back up. And if they do go back up, why they would be going back up, how much downside there was and how basically a lot of people are also thinking that any further heavy downside might be completely limited. That is to say no more, you know, $15,000 drops in price, which I have all but come to assume are completely normal for the market. But a lot of people, especially new people in the space, hello to you, uh, are not used to drops like that. So I think it causes a lot more fear than for anyone else who's been in the market for, I think, any time longer uh, than, than three years. A lot of the discussion is also floating around, for those of you not looking at the screen once again, is talking about the actual liquidity or lack thereof within the market um, in almost as if people haven't been a part of this space for a very long time. And I still assume a lot of people who are writing any kind of cryptocurrency Bitcoin articles, they must be new because the way that these articles are written, it, it's almost as if like they were in another financial system and then moved to crypto or simply they have no idea what in the world is going on. A lot of the discussion has uh, shifted once again to liquidity, or you can even say like the lack thereof, or the Bitcoin supply crunch. There's not a lot of Bitcoin. We've gone over that 10,000 million bajillion times. No, no need to actually do it again. Uh, the issue is um, a lot of people who have Bitcoin, they're hoarding it. No one wants to sell off their Bitcoin. No one wants to give away their Bitcoin. No one wants to use their Bitcoin for anything uh, simply because of the fact that the price could continue to rise what, five, six, seven X over the course of the next year and a half. Um, very similar. If you missed it, I think the last one or two videos we were going over that There's a lot of videos floating around on Instagram or maybe simply the algorithm is like, hey, this is what he wants to see. And there's a lot of um, videos floating around of people who sold Bitcoin too early. There's videos of that guy once again uh, who was remarking on the first time that Bitcoin got to $100 and how, you know, happy he was pointing at his TV screen or wherever it was. And there's a thing from Million Dollar Listing again uh, where the people did not accept the 50,000 Bitcoin for the apartment. So... If you read through the comment sections or look anywhere online, a lot of people are discussing the exact same thing. Nobody wants to sell. And it's even crazier the further you go up the ladder. Uh, the people who own 10,000 Bitcoin, 47,000 Bitcoin, like they have no intention of selling and all they're doing is accumulating, which is causing any type of, of buying motion. This moves us up in price. Uh, that's basically the long and short of it. A lot of people are talking about like, why is this happening? Why is it? And it's like, well, it's just, there's the reason why they call it the supply crunch. Like there's not a lot left. And we're seeing that all the time now, even just off of basic news that a company might be buying a couple hundred and or a thousand Bitcoin. We see the price rise quite dramatically because retail investors, everyday normal people end up going to a website they buy some crypto, but it's enough of them that they're actually causing the price to rise higher as well. And not to be left out of the discussion, of course, is everything that has to do with uh, ETFs. Uh, for some reason, people were, I don't know. And I don't know if it's like the majority of people, because what, what the, the issue is, is that like, I don't hear from everyone. So I can only go based off of the information and data that I see in the comment section. If I have 400 comments and 20,000 views on a video, I can't really gauge completely. And or if I'm on Twitter and I see like a couple of people talking about one specific thing, you know, I can only gather what information 
that I can. A lot of people were discussing uh, or they were confused as to why the inflows slowed down across Bitcoin ETFs a couple of weeks ago when we found out that Grayscale was like still selling, but they ramped up the selling a little bit more. And I think at one point we heard that the inflows into uh, the ETFs that day had only only gone to, I think, 114 million or, or something around that number. And everyone was like, oh my gosh, it's so low. And I'm like, do you understand what $114 million flowing into Bitcoin every single day, like the, the, the actual significance of that? And since that three or four day period, the inflows have once again continued to rise as they were doing before, leading to a lot of optimism, of course, um, as we get once again closer to the having it's it i i almost feel like some other kind of i i can't explain like otherworldly dimension if 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 you've never seen the movie groundhog day or anything similar to it i i feel like i'm on a really weird like daily loop where i'm constantly waking up i'm looking at the 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 date and i see that we're no almost no closer to the having than we were before it's it's honestly it's very weird to see all of this movement, to see all of this progress, to see all of this data, to see all of this hype, to see all of this like energy in the market, and we're not at the having yet. And I'm, 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 I've grown to the point where I like I just want it to be the having, so we can like literally get over that hump. But it's still not here, and we still have a couple of weeks left before it actually ends up happening, because that's the main catalyst for the beginning of the bull run all the time. But it just feels like we just won't get there, no matter how many days have passed by. Um, yeah, that's all the Bitcoin news that's really floating around. Nothing too hyper significant. Uh, we have rumors of a couple of companies who are thinking of buying, but there's still no like in the news, this has happened kind of thing, which is of course the most significant. No one cares about the rumors. Everyone cares about, okay, this company has actually purchased, but even more so people then only care when a company has purchased as opposed to just buying beforehand when the prices are lower Then people always end up buying at a higher price. And then they... It's just really weird loop that continuously goes on, I guess, maybe in all uh, financial markets. Yeah, the ETFs are doing just fine, regardless of if Grayscale is continuing to sell or not. As far as I know, they still not have lowered their fees. Something weird is happening behind the scenes. We don't know about it. We're not privy to it. We're not sitting in the room with them. But someone, listen, there's no way on this earth that I see that BlackRock, Fidelity, and all the other ones have their Bitcoin ETF fee. Some of them have a 0% fee, L like zero, like less than one, zero. And Grayscale still has a 1.5% fee. Someone's either telling them to keep that 1.5% fee f as a penalty to them. I don't know what rich people are doing or what they're talking about. Or they're simply un unaware that people don't, I, you understand what I'm saying? Like, there's no way that anyone would keep their fee at 1.5%. It just doesn't make any sense. So for whatever reason, they keep their fee high and people are continuously selling from their fund. But that's, once again, I don't know when, when the world is going on. That's the Bitcoin ETF and liquidity supply crunch news. And yeah, let's move on. Also in, sure. Why not? This made relatively popular news as well. South Africa is apparently going to give licenses to about 60 different cryptocurrency platforms by the end of the month. This move positions the nation as a front runner and requiring cryptocurrency exchanges to secure operating licenses. Apparently, they had interest from over 300 different companies. The Financial Sector Conduct Authority, or the FSCA, has laid down a deadline. And, and the timing is very weird. Maybe it's just me. It says, get your applications in by the 30th of November or face the music. Face the music, that's not a saying that people use. And this is why I keep saying these articles are very oddly written. Um, so the time frame is really weird because this says everywhere I've looked, it says by the end of the month. They're going to be giving licenses to 60 companies with over 300 who have um, applied. But then it says, have your information in by the end, but by, by the end of November. 
So does that mean November last year? Is that November this year? 300 people since the beginning of when? When were, when were they first allowed to start having applications? It would have seemed... Okay. The process, as described by the FSCA commissioner, is meticulous, aiming to sift through the applications in a structured phase due to the sheer volume, yada, yada, yada. Um, it's okay. It's, it's not bad news. Anytime this would have been bad news as if we had heard... Uh, that they were planning on banning cryptocurrencies. But I think at this point, any, and there's, the, the, there are some, any country who's banning crypto, who's banning Bitcoin, the, the economic repercussions for them are going to be so high. And I mean, if, if, if no one else, it's just their fault at this point, because every other country is basically getting in line. The idea of getting a license, sure, why not? I, rem I, oh, I remember a number of years ago where that was very taboo. The idea of uh, doing or dealing with government leaders and or anyone like in a legal kind of way and not staying within the cryptocurrency mantra was very odd and very, you know, weird. But sure, all crypto exchanges around the world have some kind of license and or a banking charter and or are owned by uh, whatever families own any given country, which is also a lot of the news that we've been getting before who've been making their own cryptocurrency exchanges as a way to um, centralize further power. Uh, but sure, like I said, relatively popular news. I can only assume because it has to do with like cryptos not banned, cryptocurrency exchanges getting licenses, still have not heard one word from India anytime soon. For those of you who don't remember or are new here, India is quite significant because they've been talking about getting cryptocurrency regulations since 2018. They're still dancing around the topic and the crazy part is is that there's over a billion people who live in india so the idea is that uh, if they ever do get cryptocurrency regulations which they're probably not going to at least for the next four to five years and you have one out of every 10 people who would get into crypto in that country that's over 100 million people 100 million people getting into crypto throwing money into the market would cause prices to explode but it would also deter people from using the Indian rupee, which is a problem that the government has been having for a while as more and more people within the country continue to slowly move into crypto even without actual proper regulation. So, I, I, I and I mean, as far as I can tell, I think nearly everywhere has crypto regulation, uh, except for India. There's still news floating around about Russia, and it's like, sure, why not? They're not a major player in the crypto market, so I don't think that anyone is actually paying attention. Every other country that like is normally in crypto news, I think already has regulations. So cool. Good job, South Africa. I hope you make the right choices and right decisions. I have a feeling they won't because a lot of different countries, they keep making the tax situation so convoluted that people, once again, as we live in the year 2024, uh, people get on buses, trains, and planes, and they go somewhere else. And they make money there where they have a better tax situation. So, yeah, that's the South Africa is apparently going to give 60 different companies cryptocurrency license size. And yeah, let's move on. In what can only be described as completely unsurprising news, a number of years ago, before the cryptocurrency space looked anything like this, uh, there were a very few players in the space who were trying to, and I use the word legitimize very loosely, trying to legitimize the space. And the New York Stock Exchange and the NASDAQ were two of them, at least from what we heard. These were two entities who announced that they were trying to, or they believed that uh, Bitcoin at some point in the future, could be a world currency. Look it up. They both said the exact same thing, and that was also a crazy video because I was like, why would they both be saying that at the exact same time? The New York Stock Exchange decided to throw their hat into the blockchain and announce that they were going to be creating a company called Bakkt, B-A-K-K-T. They were the talk of the town because if you get approval from the New York Stock Exchange talking about that they're going to you know, bring crypto to the mainstream, everyone pays attention. Part of the problem is, 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 because a lot of problems there, is that they were trying to launch different Bitcoin derivatives, Bitcoin ETNs, ETFs, you name it. 
And guess who said no? Yeah, the SEC. So they said, cool, we're going to focus on Bitcoin futures. And they were one of the very first companies or institutions to actually have Bitcoin futures. Part of the problem is, is that nobody wants Bitcoin futures. Sure, you may have people trading them. Sure, people are doing weird crap all over the planet. I don't, I don't know what people are doing. But the vast majority of people in crypto, into crypto, uh, they want to buy their own coins. So, or even, you know, it stretches a little bit further to say, people want to indirectly, directly invest in, in, in Bitcoin as well. So while you may be going through BlackRock and their ETF to actually, you know, get into Bitcoin, you know, if you sell those ETF shares, that's actually based off of real Bitcoin. So, you know, it's still indirectly, directly Bitcoin. Cool. Got it. The problem with futures is that it's just a US dollar based way of saying that there's Bitcoin somewhere and you're guessing on the price, you're guessing on this. And a lot of people realize very quick, as I mentioned a number of years ago, that when they sell it, they don't get any Bitcoin. Like there's no Bitcoin there for them. So you can actually see the devaluation of the US dollar and the money that you got back when you could have just been buying Bitcoin yourself. Like it's it just completely logical in that way. So after a number of companies had released their um, Bitcoin futures, after a couple of months, no one was using them. And there was one June, I remember it was a June, the date, I don't remember, but I remember it was a June where we heard that backed um, the money that they had f not flowing into, like the, their, daily, their daily volume for the uh, Bitcoin futures was zero. Once again, the number zero pops up in this video, like a literal zero, like no one bought any Bitcoin futures from backed around that time. It was literally zero, not $100, not 45,000. And the surprising part is that once again, this is from the New York Stock Exchange, zero interest. So, and over the years, they've kind of slugged along. They haven't been in the news. They haven't announced anything new. The New York Stock Exchange was talking about before that they planned on having their own Bitcoin exchange. It never happened. They planned on having, I mean, like it was like eight different things that they had announced. <coughs> they were also working with the Winklevoss twins to try and um, build an app together that would allow people to pay for things with Bitcoin. And if you haven't caught on, no one wants to sell their Bitcoin. So the app completely went to poo-poo because nobody wanted to use it. They even had something, I, I think, where they were trying to give like cash back. If you sp it, it was just all complete and utter nonsense by these companies who were trying to get into the space. And I realized very quickly, we're just trying to accumulate other people's Bitcoin by basically getting them to be like, hey, you want some socks? You can, you know, buy Bitcoin with us. You're going you're gonna to go buy a latte? Well, why don't you use Bitcoin? And it was, it was, it was literally, we found out that that money was never hitting the actual vendor, uh, that Bitcoin would go to the holder of maker of the app and they would give the vendor the equivalent amount in US dollars. Uh-huh. Very like, you know, sneaky way of being able to accumulate uh, some Bitcoin. Since then, Bact has basically gone cold. No one talks about it. It's never in the news. That's why I said this news is completely unsurprising. Crypto trading platform Bact has received a warning from themselves, the, literally, the New York Stock Exchange, regarding compliance with stock price requirements, they said on Wednesday. Its stock price traded below $1 per share for 30 consecutive days as of the 12th of March, triggering the New York Stock Exchange compliance concerns. They said the notice does not result in the immediate delisting of the common stock for the New York Stock Exchange. As of Thursday's pre-market session, back stock last traded around 59 cents per share. The stock is down 45% in the last month. Back to notify the New York Stock. How do you notify yourself? It's very weird. The New York Stock Exchange has a subsidiary, I, w I guess that's the word, called ICE, the Intercontinental Exchange, which created back. So they're kind of just giving themselves a letter. Notified the New York Stock Exchange on Wednesday that it plans to rectify the stock price issue and meet the required listing standards. The company now has six months to bring its stock price back up to meet the minimum requirement. Rule state that BACT must notify the New York Stock Exchange if it plans to fix the issue by taking an action requiring shareholder approval, yada, 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 et cetera, et cetera, blah, 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 blah. 
Yeah. So no one's using backed. No one has cared about backed. And if you are wondering why or have forgotten why it's B A K K T, it's because in the in the old you know the the medieval dark days of 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 the cryptocurrency space, everyone kept on misspelling stuff because they thought that it was cool. You think it's a, it's a joke, but it's it's not. Um, it's similar to what's that thing to um hodl. People found that it was literally a guy who misspelled the word um, hold. But of course, everyone was like, hodl, blah, 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 blah. And then hodl became the thing. They even gave it the little term, hold on for dear life, because, you know, you can throw things together and it ends up looking like it. And then that's when the Winklevoss twins were trying to build an app and they called it Spedden. So it was the word spend, but with the letters mixed around because, you know, cool. And then backed came out, and it was supposed to be that this is backed by Bitcoin, but they spelled it B-A-K-K-T because, you know, incorrect English is mad cool, yo. So, yeah, um, I have nothing really more to say. Of course, this was very popular simply because of the legacy, air quotes, that backed has had over the last couple of years, but no one's using it, and they haven't announced anything. I would listen if I ran a company. I would assume I'd be like, "Hey, we we definitely have a crypto exchange coming out. We definitely are working with this company. We're definitely nope, nothing. It just backed in their Bitcoin futures. They 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 don't even have Bitcoin ETFs. So that's the backed is not backed by anything news. Mm hmm. All right. Let's move on. In Yay news. Apparently, there's a streaming platform that I have never heard of. It's called Movies Plus. Movies Plus has announced that they have added Bitcoin as a payment option, allowing users to pay in Bitcoin logically. It says the firm has joined the list of companies that accept Bitcoin, including Microsoft, AT&T, and Namecheap. Fantastic. And here's a little tweet for it right here. It says Movies Plus becomes the first streaming platform to accept Bitcoin. You can now pay for your Movies Plus subscription in Bitcoin. I would have I would have never guessed from the word Bitcoin being there. Uh, cool. As I, <laughs> if you remember in January, remember what I said? I said as we get closer to the halving, everyone's going to begin to pop up. They're going to start talking about their upgrades and their updates and how you can do this with Bitcoin and you can now pay here with Bitcoin and this is the I have no idea what Movie Plus, Movies, excuse me, there's an S there, Movies Plus is offering. Um, however, I, you know, if he, here's, here's some actual financial advice, I would probably just pay in US dollars and not spend my Bitcoin, especially if it's going to 7x in price. I mean, you know, just, you know, just, just throwing out some logic there. Did I tell you, so I don't know if I told you the rest of the story. Uh, remember that thing I was telling you about on Instagram a couple of days ago where the, you know, the people were trying to sell the apartment and they got a, a, um, an offer for Bitcoin. And then I told you about it again in this video. My friend, he's, I guess, great with numbers. I never knew this before. He, he sent me a message back and he said, do you know what's, what's even crazier? He said, the, your, your basic return on that property... For those of you who don't know, the property was listed at 14 million, 14 million, one four million dollars, and they were offered fifty thousand Bitcoin for it. And he was like, based off of the trend of the property in New York at that size, it's probably worth around twenty five million dollars right now. The Bitcoin comparatively is um, worth like three, three, three something billion with a B dollars right now. And he said the craziest part is that that apartment lost 99% of its value compared to Bitcoin. Like, think about that. That asset that still rose to $25 million, comparative to the price of Bitcoin and how, how rare Bitcoin is, lost 99% of its value over the course of a 10-year period, which is absolutely staggering. So it's just kind of one of those things where it's nice that more people are accepting bitcoin as a payment option and i and i sincerely i keep i i hope that they keep that same exact energy as as we move into the next decade because you know i think a lot of people will be far more comfortable spending their bitcoin when it's worth like 
I want to say seven figures. Se seven figures seems completely like believable when people would be more inclined, but to do this now, Bitcoin's at 70,000. Let's say Bitcoin goes to 1.4 million. Is that a 20x? I think I, that's pretty sure that's, that's a 20x. No, nobody, no. I don't, I don't know. No. That's the Movies Plus No Affiliation is has announced that they are now um, uh, allowing Bitcoin as a payment option. Fantastic. I hope they continue and keep up with all that stuff. You know what's really funny? Random thing. I actually like these like really small streaming platforms and I don't know why. I, I won't name the other ones for the sake of whatever. But there are a lot of like, there's like a horror movie one. There's like a, like, I mean, it's like, it's just B and C movies. Like, it's really badly made. But I have a friend, me and him, usually every weekend, like, we actually get together and just watch terrible movies. And it's like the funnest thing in the entire world. I can't really explain it. Anyway, that's the Movies Plus news. Yeah. Let's move on. In... Completely unsurprising. I mean, completely unsurprising news. Fidelity is venturing into Ether staking, seeking approval to stake a portion of the Ether held by their proposed spot Ether exchange traded fund. For those of you who've missed it, not sure how you've done it. Since the emergence of the spot Bitcoin ETFs, the next discussion has now turned to Ether ETFs. Not sure how we got here in a day and a half, but sure. Uh, a lot of people are very optimistic on them, and a lot of other people are very pessimistic. A lot of people think that we're not going to get them. A lot of people think that we're going to get them. A lot of people are looking at Gary Gensler to see exactly how scrunched up his face is on a Tuesday. And a lot of other people on a Friday are looking at what BlackRock is doing because they're BlackRock, and they usually always get exactly what they want. The other point is, is that Ether... Um, unlike Bitcoin, actually has a, a staking function. So you don't have to have tens of thousands of computer machines to be able to make new Bitcoin. You can just use your one computer yourself and actually stake your own Ether. You can join an Ether staking pool, make some nice passive income. That's how Ether is. The issue is, is that a lot of the ETF issuers did not and have not mentioned anything about staking. One of the main selling points for Ether is not only the fact that it is deflationary and Ether is burned all the time, so there's less and less Ether, but also that you can make monies from it. That's usually the most important part from it. So I think this is now the second company to announce that they're going to actually be staking Ether uh, to basically incentivize people uh, for the ETF. You know what's a great incentive besides getting a, a Bitcoin ETF? It's an Ether ETF that you hold that continuously makes you passive income. It's just completely logical. There are many coins, there are many staking coins within the crypto space. I think that give you rewards weekly and some do it daily. I don't know which are the daily coins, but you know, think of it this way. There are a lot of people who love these staking coins because realistically, if you have enough of them, and we get to the future and all the, you know, the prices are crazy high and stuff like that. Imagine daily receiving two or three hundred dollars just from staking. It's a, it's a gigantic incentive. So, of course, Fidelity has now announced that they're also trying to get into staking as well. This move aims to provide investors with an additional income stream. As disclosed in a 19B-4 amendment filed with the United States Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, on the 18th of March. As reported earlier by The Coin Rise, the applications for spot ETH ETFs by Fidelity was postponed by the SEC and the agency stated that it needed more time to discuss absolute nonsense. The, the SEC already knows what they're going to do or rather what's going to happen or who's t telling them what they're going to do, BlackRock. Um, cool. This is actually great news as, as far as like just logic. It'll get a lot more people into uh, wanting to have these. And this will, I mean, if we can be realistic here, if we do end up getting an Ethereum ETF or multiple, we're probably going to see a 20,000 plus Ethereum in the very near future. If we don't, we'll make it to 10K 
and and be be just fine. Uh, but the idea of something like this, especially one that will have some form of passive income, will be very, very, very popular. I don't know. Do the do the crypto exchanges have? I know some of them do. I don't know if Coinbase has Ether staking. If they do, they probably charge like 25% fee or something like that. Cool. That's the Fidelity is looking to stake some of their Ether for their ETF if it gets approved. As of right now, we are still waiting. As it looks like, we might have to wait until the middle of May to receive an actual answer from the SEC. Yeah. I think that's going to do it for this video. I do hope that you have all enjoyed. I do hope you all are having a great day, morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are, wherever the heck you might be. I do hope it is absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching, listening, liking, commenting, and or supporting. And I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.